بسم الله الحمد لله الصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Today inshallah we will begin a new topic which is waqf and ibtida and we will discuss different types of waqf different stop signs in the Quran and also different types of stopping on the end of words we will also discuss al ibtida and waqf and ibtida are one of the most important areas in the sciences of tajweed because the knowledge of how to stop and begin your recitation not only adds beauty to the recitation it also helps us to understand and appreciate the words of allah subhanahu ta'ala so let's begin with al waqf the literal meaning of al waqf is to stop in tajweed rules waqf is stopping the recitation by cutting off the sound at the end of a word for taking a new breath with the intention to continue the recitation not with the intention to end the recitation waqf can be at the end of an ayah or in the middle of an ayah but it cannot appear in the middle of a word there are four categories of al waqf waqf ittirari the compelled or forced stop waqf intidari the waiting stop al waqf ikhtibari the test or examination stop and waqf ikhtiyari the optional or chosen stop waqf ittirari or the compelled or forced stop this is a kind of stop which can appear on any word in the quran due to any natural reason that may cause an urgent stop at the end of a word this could be a sneeze a cough shortness of breath or if the reciter is struggling to recite due to any natural reason in all these cases it is allowed to stop at the end of a word even if the meaning is not complete as long as one continues from the right place that means to continue from what is next repeating from the word you stopped on or going back a few words until the meaning is complete al waqf intidari the waiting stop this is a stopping when a student is learning from a teacher and he or she stops on a word to learn the rules or maybe tafsir or different styles of recitation so this kind of stop occurs when a student is studying under a teacher and it is permissible to stop as long as the reciter starts from a suitable place which gives a complete meaning al waqf ikhtibari the test or examination stop this is a stopping that is required of the student when being examined by a teacher to test their ability and knowledge or to correct them in a letter when they are reading or anything else that they feel needs some correction the student stops when instructed to and attempts to correct the mistake the rule is it is permissible here as long as the student continues from the most suitable place the last one is al waqf ikhtiyari the optional or chosen stop this is where the reciter stops by his or her own choice without any other reason there is no natural cause or request from the examiner it is a personal choice since this is the choice of the reciter so this is the only category that is under the control of the reciter and this is the category that we need to study in detail and apply in a correct way and here we can see in this chart that waqf is divided into four categories waqf ittirari waqf intidari al waqf ikhtibari and al waqf ikhtiyari and all of them we have briefly discussed but in our class we will learn about this waqf which is al waqf ikhtiyari the optional or the chosen stop and this one is further divided into four categories and we will cover these four categories in our lesson inshallah so the first of the four types of optional stopping is al waqf tam the complete stop the second one is waqf al kafi the sufficient stop the third one is al waqf al hasan the good stop and the last one is al waqf al qabih the repulsive stop 
let's start with the first one which is vakfut term the complete stop vakfut term is stopping on a word where the previous part that we have recited is a complete topic and there is no attachment of that part with the following part in grammar or meaning in other words it is a stop on a quranic word that is complete in meaning and not attached to what is after it in grammar or in meaning it is basically the end of a topic this mostly occurs at the end of an ayah or at the end of a surah or at the end of the completion of the stories in the glorious quran waqfut tam can never appear in the middle of an ayah and the rule here is it is best to stop on a word that is waqfut tam because the topic ends here and then we can start on with whatever is after it because that's the beginning of a new topic and an example of waqfut tam is stopping on this ayah of surah al fatiha where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says maliki yawmiddin master of the day of judgment it is considered as waqfut tam because the topic ends here and the next ayah is the beginning of a new topic and another example of waqfut tam is stopping at the end of ayah number 5 of surah al baqarah where the ayah ends with wa ulaika humul muflihun and it is those who are successful so stopping here is considered as waqfut tam because until here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about believers and the next ayah which begins with inna alladhina kafaru indeed those who disbelieve and in this part allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about disbelievers and it is not attached to ayah number 5 in meaning or grammar so when we choose to stop at the end of ayah number 5 it is considered as waqfut tam but sometimes scholars may differ as where in a surah there is waqfut tam because they might have a different opinion about the tafsir of the ayat as well as the grammatical analysis so the rule for waqfut tam is it is best to stop on a word where the part that we have recited is a complete topic and there is no attachment to what follows it in grammar or meaning it is a completion of a topic and then starting from what is after it the next one is al waqf al kafi the sufficient stop it is the stop on a quranic word that is complete in meaning but it is still attached to what follows it in meaning but not in grammar because it is the same topic that continues in other words during the recitation when a reciter stops at a place where the part that he has recited is giving a full meaning of its own because it is not attached to the following part in grammar but since the topic continues it is attached in meaning with the following part waqful kafi can be at the end of an ayah or in the middle of an ayah it is called sufficient due to its lack of attachment grammatically to what follows it even though it is attached in meaning and the rule of waqful kafi is it is sufficient to stop here and start with the next word or ayah because that part of the recitation gives a full meaning of its own although the topic continues if i say i have a car this is one complete sentence and the next sentence says my car is red so if i choose to stop at i have a car it is sufficient to stop here because it is giving a full meaning but my second sentence which is my car is red it is still related to the first sentence because we are still discussing the same topic so just like that al waqful kafi the sufficient stop in the quran it is a stop where that part of the recitation gives a full meaning of its own but it is still attached to what follows it in meaning but not in grammar because it is the same topic that continues so let's take an example of waqful kafi from surah al fatiha aya number 6 where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ihdina as-sirat al-mustaqim guide us along the straight path this aya is a complete sentence and it gives a full meaning of its own 
and there is no connection of grammatical nature with the next ayah. But the next ayah, Sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim ghayri al-mawdubi alayhim wa al-dhalleen. The path of those you have blessed, not those you are displeased with or those who are astray. And this ayah is the continuation of the same topic. So that's why stopping at Eidina Sirat al-Mustaqeem will be considered as Waqf al-Kafi because it is attached in meaning to what follows it. Waqf al-Kafi can appear at an end of an ayah and it can also appear in the middle of an ayah and it is sufficient to stop on it and start with what follows it just like Waqf al-Tam. The next category is Al-Waqf al-Hasan, the good stop. It is the stop on a Quranic word where the part that we have recited will give a good sense of meaning but still connected to what follows it in the meaning and grammar. It can be found at the end of an ayah or in the middle of an ayah and this waqf is called al-hasan or good due to the fact that stopping on it leads to an understanding of the meaning and the rule for waqf al-hasan is it is allowed to stop on it However, if one wants to continue with what is after it, then it will depend on where it is located. If the word you stop on is at the end of an ayah, then it is encouraged to stop on it and to continue with the next ayah as it is sunnah to stop at the end of an ayah. But if the word you stop on is in the middle of an ayah, then it is not encouraged to continue with the following part it's better to go back a few words and start from a suitable place that gives a complete meaning. Here again, we can take the example from Surah Al-Fatiha where Allah subhanahu ta'ala says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise is for Allah, Lord of all worlds. If we choose to stop in the middle of this ayah and we stop here, Alhamdulillah, it gives a clear meaning but it is not good to start on what follows it as they are connected with each other. So it is better to start from Alhamdulillah and join with rest of the ayah. However, if Waqful Hassan appears at the end of an ayah, then stopping at the end of an ayah is sunnah. And then we don't have to go back to the previous ayah. We can continue from the next ayah. And the last one is al waqful Qabi. The repulsive stop or the disliked stop, this occurs when stopping on a word where the part that is being recited either gives a wrong meaning, unintended meaning or changed meaning because it has a strong connection with the following part in both grammar and meaning. That's why stopping here is considered as waqful qabi. And the rule of waqful qabi is it is not allowed unless it is waqf al or for stopping due to some natural reason. But the reciter must go back to start from a suitable place that gives a complete meaning. Let's take an example from Surah Al-Fatiha again. If you see in this ayah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. So stopping at Alhamdu, which means all praise, this does not give any meaning. So waqf here is considered as waqf al qabi because it does not give a complete or clear meaning as it is strongly connected to what follows it. So if due to some reason the reciter stops at the word alhamdu, they must go back and start again from the same word and join it with the rest of the ayah. Another example of waqf al qabi is if we stop on a word that gives a different meaning or an unintended meaning. For example, ayah number 43 from Surah An-Nisa, which says, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara. O believers, do not approach prayer while intoxicated. So if the reciter stops at, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la taqrabu salah, and this gives a meaning that, O believers, do not approach prayer. Now you can see stopping here is qabi. It's inappropriate because it is giving a wrong meaning. 
But if due to waqf al-turari, the reciter needs to stop, they must go back to start from a suitable place that gives a complete meaning. And there are different stop signs in the Quran. These signs are ijtihad of the scholars. We might see a difference in these signs in different copies of the Quran. If the reciter doesn't know the meaning of that sign, it's better to follow these sign as per your own mushaf. They are usually written at the end. The signs that I am discussing here are found in Uthmani script, Medina printed copies. The first symbol is letter jim. This letter jim comes from the word jaiz, which means permissible or allowed. This sign indicates that we have an option to stop on this word and we don't have to go back in order to start our recitation. The next symbol is called sula. This symbol indicates that it is allowed to stop here, but continuing the recitation is better. The next symbol is called qala, and this symbol indicates that it is okay to continue. However, in order to give the best meaning, it is better to stop here. The next sign is letter meme written like this. And whenever we find this sign, this indicates that it is required to stop here and not stopping on this word could change the meaning. But we need to make sure that we do not confuse this meme with the sign of Iqla, which is this kind of meme. The next symbol is Lam Alif, La, which means no. And this symbol indicates it is not allowed to stop on this word and start on the following word. But if due to Waqf al the forced stop, the reciter must go back a few words and start from a suitable place to give a complete meaning. Next symbol is these signs. They always appear in a pair. And this sign indicates that you can only stop at one of these signs. And if we choose to stop at the first one, we cannot stop on the second one. And if you don't stop on the first one, it's better to stop on the second one to give the better understanding of the meaning. And they always appear close to each other. Now let's see these signs written in the Quran in different ayat. And I took these examples from Surah Al-Baqarah. Here you can see the letter jim. This sign tells us that it is allowed to stop here on the word kathiran. We will follow all the rules of stopping here, which in this case is stopping with maddul aywa. And then we don't have to go back. Instead, we can start from the following part. And this is permissible. And there is another stop sign here, which is this meme where I'm pointing right now. And you can see this meme is different than this meme. So this meme here is representing waqf lazim. This meme is indicating that it is required from the reciter to stop on this word to give the proper meaning, and then the reciter does not have to go back and they can start from the following part. But this meme here is an indication of iqlab, and we should not mix it with this meme, which is a compulsory stopping or waqful lazim. We can see another sign, which is sila, and this sign indicates that it is better to continue, but even if the reciter choose to stop here, they don't have to go back. They can start from the following part. Here in this ayah, we can see the sign of qila, although you can continue, but it is better to stop here to give the best meaning. And here in this ayah, we can see lam alif. This sign of la indicates not to stop on this word and start on the following word. So it is better to continue to give the proper meaning. And here we can see these two signs, as we have mentioned already, that they always come in pair. This sign indicates that you can stop at one of these signs. So either you stop at the word raiba or at the word fihi. We cannot stop at both of them. And if you are following the Indopak script, it's better to follow the signs as per your mushaf. And these signs are usually written at the end of the mushaf with their meanings. I hope this is clear to you. Insha'Allah, we will continue with the topic. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.